Hello fellow Spare Parts Army. In this episode, we'll cover the Dragunov rifle and the differences between the squad designated marksman and the sniper. I need to warn you though, after watching this video, you're going to desperately want your own Dragunov rifle. I know I did after researching this video and I can proudly say my dreams came true with goat guns. Now I take my goat guns Dragunov everywhere I go. It helps protect all my books that I never read. It keeps me safe while I sleep at night. And it's a great conversation starter for your place if you're into talking to other people. Click the link in the description and use code TASK to get 10% off your order, and then you too can have your very own Dragunov rifle. So as a former American soldier, I admire our Russian army counterparts. Today's episode is about the Russian squad support weapon called the Dragunov sniper rifle. It's the rifle I would most want to have if I was stuck in the Siberian mountains hunting a bear. In Russia, bear hunts you. Shut up. The Dragunov sniper rifle is important to learn about because of its unique role within the sniper community as a squad designated marksman rifle. The extra magazine capacity and ability to fire semi-automatically set it apart from other sniper rifles. Okay, so we all know about the hardcore snipers out there who are checking the humidity and measuring the curvature of the earth. They need to know whether or not mercury is in retrograde and then they calculate all of that just to get their two and a half mile long shot perfect. The SVD rifle does not fall into that category of sniper rifles, no. The SVD shooter might check the wind and sure, they'll use actual shooting fundamentals, but they're not gonna write a book about it when they get home. I'm looking at you every single sniper in military history. It's more like a medium battle rifle. When I say medium, what I mean is that it's meant for engaging troops from 400 meters to 800 meters. That's a little further out than your average rifleman can hit and it's a lot more distance than your below average rifleman <clears throat> like me can hit. The SVD falls into the category that we like to call the squad designated marksman, and we'll get into all the important differences between snipers and SDMs. Stick around till the end of the video to hear about the changes that the Russian military has made to the now upgraded and modern Dragunov. The Dragunov is a really historic Soviet weapon. It's one of those rifles that most people will recognize even without much knowledge of firearms. The original version was made of wood and metal. It has a unique profile when you see the thing because of the skeletonized wooden thumbhole stock. Part of the reason they made the stock hollowed out like that was to make it weigh less. There's an option to add a cheek pad to the buttstock, which I would definitely use. I don't want my cheek uncomfortable against wood, especially if I'm out in the Russian cold. Come on, we're squad designated marksmen, not snipers. We're not trying to be too uncomfortable out there. No need to go full Vasily Zaisef on me. Today's version is no longer made from wood, but instead fabricated from polymer to increase durability and decrease overall weight. The barrel of the rifle is semi-free floated, and this means that it's connected by a spring-loaded mechanism to the handguard. The handguard can move with the barrel when you fire it. The standard set by the Russian military is that it needs to have a minute of angle of 1.24. The minute of angle is determined by shooting five groups at 300 meters. I've always had a lot of respect for all the snipers and SDM types that I've met when I was in the military. They were always some of the most squared away and chill shooters out there. In Mother Russia, you do not shoot SVD. SVD shoot you. Hey, Boris. I hope your accent's better than the British one that we had in that episode two weeks ago. Yet, this is not. Cappy, I just wanted to tell you about how Russia deploys the SVD on the front lines. We use it to support our advancing infantry by having one in each squad. We harass targets of opportunity, like officers in RTOs. It has a detachable magazine of 10 rounds, which is five more than what you would have in one of your American bolt-action sniper rifles, like your M24. Those extra 10 rounds and semi-automatic fire make it a better rifle for supporting infantry than, say, like a bolt-action sniper rifle. So what you're saying is, even though the bolt-action sniper rifles might be more precise, the SVD is meant to fill a different role. Affirmative. The SVD is meant for a single operator instead of having it be a part of a two-man Russian sniper team. And this is all I'm authorized to tell Americans about our Dragunov sniper rifle. One more thing, Kepi. The Russians won World War II on the Eastern Front. Hey, that was a team effort back then. Thank you, Sergeant Boris. The SVD is a semi-automatic gas-operated short-stroke gas piston system rifle. There is a gas regulator that has two different positions which the operator can adjust. 
This adjustment helps the rifle cycle reliably when shooting in extreme cold or high altitude. And as we all know, there's a lot of extremely cold environments in Russia. You might have noticed how similar the weapon looks to the AK series. Yes, it's true, the SVD has a few cosmetic design features that are similar to the AK, including the large dust cover and the lever safety selector. And yes, the SVD is often used by the same military forces that use the AK series. However, internally, the AK and the SVD are fundamentally very different. The SVD uses a short stroke action instead of the long stroke used in the AK. They also fire different types of ammo. The AK shoots the 762 by 39 mm intermediate round, while the SVD fires the full power 762 by 54 mm. The Western militaries frequently use an M14 to fill the same squad designated marksman role that the SVD does. Which rifle is better? I don't know. That's like asking what's better, whiskey or vodka. In this analogy, whiskey would be the M14 and vodka would obviously be the Russian one. At this point, I'm sure everyone can have a civil debate in the comments section about which is better, the M14 or the SVD. The optics attached to the SVD always stood out to me. It's the first thing I noticed when I saw the rifle. The current version of the sight is called the PSO-1M2. It's a 4 by 24 telescopic sight. Right off the bat, in the name of the role, Squad Designated Marksman, we get an idea of why this weapon isn't your traditional sniper rifle. It's attached at the squad level. No matter what army you serve in around the world, a squad has about the same amount of soldiers in it, 9 to 12. Each soldier has a different role to cover a different combat contingency. The SDM in each squad, on the other hand, has the job of laying down precision fire at distances that the regular rifleman cannot reach with any kind of accuracy. To which you might say, why not give every single soldier in the platoon the SVD if it's more accurate than what the riflemen carry? But that would be to ignore some of the limitations of the weapon. The SVD is 48 inches long and 10 pounds, so it's more unwieldy for close quarters combat compared to, say, the AKM, which is only 34 inches long and 7 pounds. Little known fact, the SVD is actually just one bottle of vodka away from becoming a VSS. The Russian army first deployed the rifle in 1963 when Yevgeny Dragunov created it. Yes, I too was surprised and a little disappointed to learn that the rifle wasn't named after a dragon. I guess a dragon is more of a Welsh thing, not a Russian thing. What would a Russian thing be? Like a, a bear rifle? It has since become the main long-range squad support weapon for many countries, including the former Warsaw Pact countries. They made it because they needed to fill the gap of having precision fire at the platoon level. Snipers are more focused on taking out high-valued officers or high-value targets. They only reveal their position with a shot for a very good reason. They might spend days hiding and waiting with their bolt-action sniper rifle. They're not just going to shoot off the cuff. This rifle is meant for soldiers to be able to engage multiple targets quickly. This isn't a delicate sniper rifle that has its zero thrown off if you bump into it or you kiss it too much. This is a platoon level combat rifle. By this point you should be head over heels in love with the Dragunov Squad designated marksman rifle. Scratch that itch and pick up the mini replica from Goat Guns. You can buy them already assembled or put the pieces together yourself. Take the magazine out, put tiny dummy ammo rounds into the magazine, rack the bolt, and run dry drills from the comfort of your couch. They make great gifts for your friends or family. I have one in every room at my place. It's a great conversation starter. Anybody else want a White Claw? Oh, you noticed my goat gun? Yeah, I uh, dabble in operating. Thank you for noticing. Click the link in the description and use code TASK to get 10% off your order today. Russian infantry snipers and sharpshooters are now in the process of getting their hands on the most modern variant of the Dragunov rifle. The newest version gives shooters better accuracy, ergonomics, and most importantly, it allows them to mount a wider range of accessories. This is very important because the future of firearms isn't going to be about the firearm. I know, you're blown away. You can't believe it. But yes, I bet my last donut that the future of weapons will revolve around the fire control system, the optic. A good weapon will need to be able to mount the latest optics to compete. And that's why it's going to be huge that they're adding the Picatinny rail system to the SVD. The new SVD will have a fancy new heavier chrome lined barrel with a muzzle accessory that will make it far more accurate now. It also gives the gun a better balance overall. It's now made of polymer so it's lighter and it feels better against your skin, especially if you have sensitive skin like I do. 
It also has the ability to fold the stock, which is a huge plus. It's kind of fascinating that a weapon invented in 1963 is still the go-to for many countries today. Granted, it's been upgraded a ton since then, but fundamentally, it's still the same firearm. The SVD is more accurate than a Grunt AKM, and while you wouldn't want to clear a building with the SVD, you should probably also be happy that you're not clearing buildings. End of story. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe to Be My Battle Buddy. I'm your host, Chris Cappy. Task and Purpose out.